Hello, BookTube, and welcome back to a series of videos in which I am reading you a book. We are reading the Gospel According to St. Matthew in the King James Bible. In this, uh, I'm reading it from this Norton Critical Edition, uh, and we're having a blast. I think it's safe to say that. We're having a blast. The howls of indignation and how dare you's that I was expecting simply have not materialized. I clearly picked my booktube crowd correctly. <laughs> it's just wonderful. I would have been really disappointed if I got those shrill how dare you's, but I would also have been almost more disappointed if this read aloud and discussion, this lively thing that we're doing, were being participated in only by diehard atheists. I would also be have been disappointed in that, maybe more so, if all my comments, all the emails that I'm getting, all the Voxer messages that I'm getting, were along the lines of, yeah, isn't this dumb? It's certainly not dumb. And I, the people who believe it are not dumb. And that would, that would have really depressed me, and that didn't happen either. So, so I, I was originally going to make a break between Gospels, but we're just going to push through. We're going to read. We're going to read the whole, uh, the, the the Synoptic Gospels, then John. We're going to read uh, Acts and Luke together. So it'll be it'd be a huge amount of God bothering before we move on to the next thing we're going to read out loud. And I don't know what that is, but I'm going to read out loud to you and kibitz about it forever. <laughs> so, so we are in the the Gospel according to Saint Matthew. That's the one we're reading now, and we are up to chapter three. In chapter 1 and chapter 2, we were reintroduced to the character we met in the, in the Gospel according to St. Mark, uh, a character named Jesus, who is born of a human mother, but has uh, supernatural stuff in his makeup. Is the, he is born, Mary is impregnated in this, in this Gospel, she is impregnated by the Holy Ghost, who is not human, is a supernatural being. She, so Jesus is not the, the biological son of his father, Joseph. Uh, and we've followed his convoluted childhood, his his babyhood in in a house that's visited by three wise men, their flight into Egypt, the flight the the return to Judea, uh, and now we're in chapter three, and you're going to notice two things right away. One is that Jesus is all grown up; we're not getting his rebellious teenage years, uh, and also we get introduced into a character that we met in the Gospel according to Saint Mark. Uh, so here is chapter three. In those days came John the Baptist, uh, preaching in the wilderness of Judea and saying, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For this is he that was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah, saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his path straight. And the same John had his raiment of camel's hair and a leathern girdle about his loins, and his meat was locusts and wild honey. Then went out to him Jerusalem, and all Judea, and all the regions round Jordan, and were baptized of him in Jordan, confessing their sins. So we have the return of John the Baptist, who is, uh, once again, uh, preaching out in the wilderness, wearing rags, living on honey and locusts. He's, he's a wild man in the, in the wilderness. He is not a preacher coming into the porticos of the temple and talking in the synagogue. He's not that at all. And he's drawing huge crowds uh, of people who want him to dunk them in the River Jordan and tell them that their sins are forgiven if they repent. And, and once again, we get what is clearly going to be a, an authorial tick of whoever wrote the Gospel according to St. Matthew, uh, which is this constant referencing of how everything that you're reading fulfills a scripture that you've grown up with uh, somewhere, that somehow or other this was long foretold. Uh, but when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees come to his baptism, he said unto them, O generation of vipers, who hath warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bring forth therefore fruits, meat for repentance, and think not to say within yourselves, We have Abraham to our father. For I say unto you that God is able of these stones to raise up children unto Abraham. And now also the axe is laid unto the root of the trees. Therefore every tree which bringeth forth not good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, but he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Whose fan is in his hands, his will thoroughly purge the floor and gather his wheat into the garner but he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. 
So this John is a little better spoken than the last John. <laughs> this is a, a, a more powerful version of, of John, at least that we ever get. We never actually learn the conversations that he had with, with uh, the man who eventually puts him to death. We never learn those conversations. Both the accusation that you, you shouldn't be sleeping with your brother's wife, and also conversations that were, that were happened after that when John was in prison. We never hear any of that. Uh, but here we're getting a voice very clear. Unquenchable fire. Then comes Jesus from Nazareth to Jordan onto John to be baptized of him. So all grown up. Uh, but John forbade him, saying, I have need to be baptized of thee, and thou comest to me. And Jesus answering said unto him, Suffer it to be so for now. For thus, thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he suffered him. And Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water, and lo, the heavens were opened unto him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove, and lighting upon him. And lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Uh, and that is chapter 3, a very short chapter. It's some broad strokes of what we've seen before. John the Baptist makes a reappearance, and also this vision of heavenly approval, a voice from heaven identifying Jesus. Uh, the only other element here uh, is that John abases himself to Jesus, presumably in public. It says, well, you're coming to me for baptism, I should be baptized by you, which is a, an indication that John understands something about Jesus that is, I guess, essentially supernatural. But here we have the start. This is the beginning. Our character Jesus is now in the spotlight and an adult. He has been baptized and presumably is about to start his ministry. So we'll see what form that takes. We, we didn't have to wait long with Matthew to find that the note of antagonizing the authorities in Jerusalem. John the Baptist has already done that. Uh, he isn't antagonizing just one ruler now. He's antagonizing the whole of the priestly caste. So uh, let's see what what happens next time. It's a very short chapter. We'll wrap this up for now. We'll go move on to the next chapter next time and see if the focus shifts to Jesus. <laughs> Thank you, Booktube.